Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Oh, great. I wasn't sure if you heard me. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I will share my presentation so we can make sure your trip to algebra to Croatia is as good as it gets. So as you may know, algebra is a university college in Croatia. Uh, Croatia is actually situated in European Union and I wanted to put this on the slide so you can see the neighboring countries. So actually Zagreb is the capital of Croatia and the campus of algebra is uh, in Zagreb. But when you want, if you want to travel from Zagreb to Ljubljana, which is the capital of Slovenia, it takes you an hour drive. If you want to go to Vienna in Austria, it's a, around three hour drive. And if you want to go to Venice, to Italy, it's like three and a half, maybe four hour drive. So everything is quite close uh, in Europe, in this part of Europe. So as I told you, Croatia is a part of European Union. We were the last uh, member country that entered European Union in July, on July 1st, 2013, so seven and a half years ago. And uh, I recently read that Croatia is the lifestyle capital of Europe, and I really liked it, so I wanted to put it in our presentation. So you can see some pictures uh, here about our country. It's quite unique. We have the seaside with more than 1,200 islands. We have the continental part with a lot of historical buildings and cities. And we have beautiful nature overall. So we have the mountainy part of Croatia, the uh, Adriatic part of Croatia, but also the continental part. Our country is quite safe to live in. So uh, according to the Global Peace Index in 2019, uh, our country was ranked 28 among 163 countries. So when you look at this map of the world, all countries that are marked green are considered safe countries and Croatia is one of them. Uh, I told you our campus is located in Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. So uh, Zagreb is actually administrative, economic, diplomatic and cultural capital of Croatia. And when the country has roughly around 4 million people living in, in Croatia, we have uh, one quarter of those people living in Zagreb. Uh, a part of algebra, Zagreb has more than 40 higher education institutions. And we can say it's like a student city because over 90,000 students live in Zagreb. Our university is uh, actually a university of applied sciences. So all of the study programs we offer are very applied and very connected to the labor market and the uh, employers. So we offer top quality professional study programs in the Republic of Croatia. Algebra has been on the market for more than 22 years and Algebra Group actually started uh, with adult education program or, or long life learning program. And we're at this point, the biggest private education provider in Croatia. Uh, roughly around 15,000 students come to algebra to change their career, learn something new, or just join the study programs. Uh, in higher education, we, have, we don't have a lot of students. It's only 1,400 students, but it's mostly because of the fact that in Croatia, 94% of universities are public universities and there are not a lot of private education uh, providers in Croatia. So uh, when it comes to algebra, we are ranked first in our country according to our national agency that's in charge of science and higher education in terms of quality assurance system and the quality of overall study programs. Uh, in 2009, we uh, received the special accreditation from the NVAO. It's actually the Dutch Flemish Accreditation Agency, and they say we're still the only institution in Croatia that has met the quality requirements uh, that their agency uh, asks for. Uh, in 2014, uh, Algebra was pronounced the best education organization in the world among 3,200 organizations by Microsoft. And this year we defended this title because we founded a special 
uh, foundation that's called LLPA, Leading Learning Partners Association, and we won this award in 2020 as well. MIT from USA actually uh, recognized Algebra as the best professional university in Europe. So they decided to organize their first MIT bootcamp in European Union at Algebra. But of course, due to the pandemics, everything was postponed for the time after pandemics. It was supposed to be in May 2020, but as you, as I told you, it didn't, it didn't hold. So the mission of Algebra is to create opportunities for creation and international students to acquire excellent skills and knowledge to build a globally competitive career in digital technologies. So that's what we focus on. This is a picture of our campus a bit from above. You can see it's a very old and historical campus. It was built in 1903 during the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Empress Maria Theresa actually built this campus and it served as a campus back then, but for military purposes. Uh, now we have on this campus a couple of universities and Algebra is just one of them, but we are building our new campus, much more modern, uh, half a kilometer away from this location. So we will still be in the city center, which is really important because we're very, very well connected to the entire city of Zagreb. So these are the programs we offer. Uh, we offer programs at bachelor level and master level. So some programs are accredited in computer science, some are accredited in arts and some in economy. We actually started with computer science programs 20 years ago. So uh, the most sought after programs now are software engineering, system engineering, both bachelor and master level. But we also offer multimedia computing at bachelor level while at master level, we also offer data science and game development. So all students who have their background in computer science can actually join our master programs, even if they didn't finish it in Croatia. So if you have any prospective students who would be interested in joining the master programs, depending on the field, they would need to have some prerequisites, which we always uh, check with students after they send the documents. When it comes to arts programs, we offer two programs at bachelor level. It's visual communications design, it's mostly graphic design, but we also started offering this year, it's a new program, uh, 3D modeling. And this is a new program. And we, in spite of the fact that we just got accredited a few months ago, we managed to enroll a huge group of students in this academic year. All students uh, who have a background in arts can join the design and communications management at master level. Uh, even though the program is interdisciplinary between arts and economy, we mostly accept students who have uh, some kind of art background and art, who have arts portfolio. When it comes to the field of economy, we offer at both levels, bachelor and master, digital marketing which is a really sought after program, especially in Europe. I, I realized that recently that Australia doesn't have this kind of programs. And we were actually the first one in the world who offered these programs. And now more universities decide to start this kind of education for their students as well. But in the field of economy, we also have an MBA in e-leadership, which is quite special because our faculty teaches only 30% of courses and 70% 70, 70 of courses are taught by faculty from Kelly School of Business in Indiana University, USA. And the Kelly School of Business is actually be, uh, among the top 15 business schools in the world. So this is really a good thing. As I told you, our programs are very applied. So within Algebra, uh, part of a lot of academic councils, we have a special economic council. It's actually uh, roughly around 30 members, uh, CEOs and general managers of the biggest companies who act in Croatia. And they actually help us uh, uh, renew and update our programs up to 20% every year. So when the students finish the study program uh, at bachelor or master level can actually just join the employers without any extra special uh, education and certifications because most employers in Croatia uh, like to employ uh, our students and most students come from this professional study program background. Here 
are some companies we cooperate with. So these are actually companies where students take internship or get employed during the studies or after they finish their studies. I'm sure you've heard of Microsoft or Google or uh, Canon or uh, Intudata or McAfee or Ericsson, but there are a lot of creation unicorns as well here. Maybe you've heard of Infobe. It's a company that uh, just became a unicorn. They're a really cool company. Uh, and a lot of, of our students work at Infobip as well. We also cooperate with the Rimats cars. Uh, they have uh, smart electrical cars, uh, much better than Tesla cars. And we take pride in cooperating with them as well. But our academic programs also have some special academic partners uh, certificates incorporated in the study programs. So depending, depending on the study program students choose to uh, study, we also offer them during the program some special certifications. It's never mandatory, it's something if students want to, they can actually join uh, the special uh, courses for preparation for extra certifications. Uh, we also have a research facility with the, within Algebra, and we uh, decided to found it as Algebra Lab a few years ago when our scientists and group of researchers won the big European Big Data Hackathon Award. And actually, our team of scientists was the best team in entire Europe. So we uh, realized how good we were with data science and AI and uh, these digital technologies. And now we have a special research hub within Algebra. And together, uh, a part of this res research hub is the innovation hub, where students who don't want to start working for another company, who want to start their own projects or companies or further develop their ideas, they can actually uh, turn to our colleagues at Algebra Lab and say, okay, I have a great idea, I want to develop it, or I have a new project and I need some people who want to work on this project with me. So they go to Algebra Lab where they can meet the people from the industry, the people from the research, and other students, and of course the teachers that could help them develop their ideas and possibly get it funded by some investors. Uh, a lot of students who join Algebra uh, also consider uh, some international possibilities uh, the programs offer them, not only to be in Croatia for two or three years or even five, but some of them want to take a semester abroad, a year abroad, or internship abroad with our partner institutions. Within Europe, we have a program that's called Erasmus Plus that actually awards special scholarships to students who want to take mobility to another institution or uh, to take internship. But if they want to travel outside of Europe to join uh, some other partner institution for half a year or a year, they can actually do it on their with their expenses, but they don't have to pay the really high tuition to these partners because we have special cooperation agreements with these institutions. I told you we have this special uh, program with the Kelly School of Business in the MBA, but we also have a dual degree program with Griffith College in Dublin. So uh, our students who study in computer science at the bachelor level and finish their three years of bachelor can actually decide if they want to, they can join the Griffith College in Dublin for the fourth year of bachelor and get a, a bachelor's degree with honors uh, from the Griffith uh, College in Dublin and therefore get two degrees, one from Croatia and one from Ireland. Uh, at this point, we're developing a new study program with the Epitech Institution from France and it will be a master program in computer science, but the f special field will be IoT, Internet of Things. This program is to uh, start with accreditation beginning of 2021. So we expect to have this program ready for the September intake in 2021. All students who join our universities, uh, university uh, are quite happy with the fact that we have a special body program. 
So we organize a lot of international events for students when they uh, join us first. So we always have a welcome day, some international events like International Friday, International Movie Nights, great international cook-offs. And we often try to uh, organize some field trips as well. But a part of that, every international student gets their own buddy who helps them get around to uh, enjoy the student life better, to ask some things that maybe we at international office don't know because we're not students anymore. So uh, most students are quite happy with this buddy program. A part of the regular study programs, we also offer some short programs like winter schools and summer schools. Uh, this January, we plan an online winter school. Uh, we offer three courses students can choose to participate in. It's artificial intelligence or digital marketing or cybersecurity. Uh, together with these options, all students get a special Croatian language and culture course where they can learn the basics of Croatian language and a lot of interesting things about our culture. We also have a July program that should be held uh, normally on site because we hope the pandemics will ease up by then. So uh, our international summer school is planned for July 2021 in two cities. The program takes three weeks. We always have a first week in Zagreb, the second week in Zadar, which is on the Croatian coast, and the last week back in Zagreb. And for the summer, we always offer students a chance to participate in one or two courses. So we have a lot of students who are eager to see, to get more credits than uh, they would normally do during this short program. So we provide them very intense programs in artificial intelligence, branding, cybersecurity, data-driven storytelling, digital marketing, or mobile application development. And we also provide this creation language and culture course. These are some pictures from our previous programs. Here are the winter ones when you, where you can see a lot of snow. And of course, uh, now is the pandemic all over the world. Uh, we are not under lockdown th uh, at this point. We had a two months lockdown in spring, but at that time we had all courses online, but our students were quite happy even though they were online, they were quite happy with the module uh, modules we had and the uh, way of teaching. But now we have all courses in classrooms, uh, especially the labs, even though we organize some courses, uh, lectures online, but all labs are in the classrooms main, where we maintain safe distance between students and make sure that all students wear masks, of course, and teachers. And we also uh, clean a lot, disinfect every now and then, and really uh, try to help students and teachers fight this pandemic. So I hope you like the presentation and maybe if you have some questions, you can ask me. So I would be happy to get back to you. I can also show you, uh, tell you a bit about the admission procedures for bachelor, master and MBA programs if you like, but maybe we can first see if you have any questions so far. Aha, uh -huh. you want to learn more about the recognition process. Okay, so uh, when we receive the application from students, uh, we are obliged to collect all of their educational documents together with the pass passport and translate all of these documents into Croatian language and then submit the documents to the agency in charge of this recognition. So uh, the procedure takes for master level uh, roughly around 30 days because it's much easier and we're allowed by law to do to have a committee with that within our university but when it comes to bachelor uh, enrollment so all students who finish their high school outside of Croatia uh, they also have to send us all the documents we also translate all documents into Croatian but we submit it on behalf of the student to the creation agency in charge of that. And they have a deadline of maximum 60 days to make this uh, recognition. Uh, if we, we always check the documents first. We don't want the student to send the documents that are invalid 
So we always check the documents before submitting it to the agency to make sure to avoid any problems in the process of recognition. And during the recognition, we also do the admission procedures. So, so we have like two parallel processes to avoid uh, this procedure like lasting for three or even more months. So we like to think of our office as a one-stop shop for students who, so we usually ask students to uh, give us power of attorney uh, just for one thing, and that is for acquiring the creation PIN number, because without this PIN number, we cannot go uh, further in the in the enrollment because we have to have the number to be able to enroll the students. So we uh, have a, everything is of course digital. So we send you uh, the forms for uh, power of attorney. So my, co my colleagues can go to the tax administration office to get this P VAT number, PIN numbers for students. And after that, we can enroll them and go ahead with the entire procedure. Uh, so I'm talking too much. Uh, so the translation, uh, do you mean translation in English or creation? We do all the translations from English to, to creation. Okay, yeah, we do the translation into creation for all documents because we're aware that not all countries in the world have uh, court interpreters for creation. Uh, I can I can show you the admission procedures just a sec. Okay, I will I will send you in the chat the documents that are required, so you can uh, just a second. Okay, so now I will send you first for the bachelor oh thank you <laughs> thank you dania so would you like me to share with you the admission procedures for bachelor and then master and possibly MBA. Okay. Let me just share screen. So these, these are the admission procedures for bachelor study programs. Uh, I'm sure you have the PDFs uh, that I sent. So you can, when you click on each of these links, it uh, guides you to the English website where you can see more information about the study program and lecture plan and each particular course uh, within the semester. So all bachelor programs are three years in Croatia, so it's like European system. Uh, they're all taught in English and students get 180 European credits during this bachelor programs. So the prerequisite is four years of high school. So we cannot enroll students who didn't, who don't have four years of high school. It's uh, against the law in Croatia. And the annual tuition is between 5,500 euros to 5,850 euros. And all students who are successful within the program will get a degree, bachelor degree issued by our university and were recognized by the U European qualification framework. So the courses in 2021 start in the end of September. So the first step of the procedure is to have an online application. Of course, you can do it for students. Uh, step two is to send all of these documents and then we translate everything into uh, creation language and submit it to the agency. Uh, during that uh, academic recognition, we have the entrance exam and interviews with students. So we have an online interview uh, where we always check the English knowledge of students. So we require at least B2 level of English. But we also, if we see that the student has borderline English, we also help the student get to that level of B2 
uh, before they, they come to the studies. Uh, we also have a special entrance exam. It depends on the study program students want to enroll, but we do it online using the exam.net system so the students can actually do it from the comfort of their home. So after the students uh, finish the exam and the interview and get their academic recognition, then they can make the tuition fee payment. So we usually ask students to make payment of 70% of tuition before uh, we issue the acceptance letters for the visa. And after the visa is approved, uh, then the student has to make payment of the re remaining 30% of the tuition fee for the first annual uh, tuition. Uh, so after that, student has to apply for a visa it's not so complicated to get a visa. So basically, the students have to have acceptance letter from the university. They have to have at least travel insurance to travel to Croatia and possibly some international uh, insurance for uh, health insurance during their studies if they don't want the Croatian health insurance. And uh, of course, there are countries who don't require visa to enter uh, Croatia, but most actually do. So the visa procedure is usually 15 working days. And we always, when we know that student is applying for a visa, we also send an email to our Ministry of uh, European and Exteriors. And we also send an email to the embassy where the student will submit the application. So we uh, try to help students in every way. So visa is actually uh, used to students only to enter the country. After they enter the country, they have to ask for a temporary residence permit and they basically use the same documents they did for a visa application to uh, ask for this temporary residence permit and students get it for every academic year. So if the student, when the student finishes the first academic year, they reapply for the residence permit and we give them, we give the students new documents for this uh, residence permit application. So also they have to have the proof of health insurance. There are a few options for the health insurance and that's about it. So um, we always ask students to come to Croatia at least 30 days, uh, sorry, two weeks before the study program starts. So it's quite important to us that the student comes before uh, the courses start because of we want to meet them, we want to show them around, we want to provide them a lot more information on site. And after the courses start, we organize the welcome events and the body program and all other details. Do you think this is clear? So the uh, procedure is almost the same for the master program, but for the master program, we don't have entrance exam. We just have the interview with students. No questions? Would you like me to play you one video? Okay, just a sec. I had it ready, <laughs> but I closed it by accident. Sorry, now I can share the screen.
So I hope you liked it. Uh, maybe I could share with you some <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so we just made a video to show the student experience, you know, from the start to the very end. But actually, I wanted to share some other important information that you might find useful to to student to when you talk to students. So students are allowed to work in Croatia part-time so we have like a student center and all students who find a part-time job are uh, allowed to work uh, up to 20 hours per week and of course when they have internship they all they can work uh, full full time but it's during the internship time when we have it within the study program uh, when students come to Croatia, we help them find the accommodation so we cooperate with, of course we help them to find it before they come because they need to have accommodation to get a visa and to get this temporary residence permit. So we cooperate with an agency that's called Home in Zagreb. And they we always recommend students to, to book their first accommodation using their agency because they have only students, you know, uh, they accommodate and students can live in small studios or bigger apartments where they always have their own room but share the kitchen and living spaces and some other facilities as well. So it always depends on the student's budget and uh, desires, of course. And this agency provides all kinds of accommodation, but mostly student accommodation. And it's always good to have a recommended accommodation because you don't want the student to come to a strange country and to find out that the apartment is not what it looks on the pictures or something like that. We just don't want the student to have the bad first experience. But after like three or four months, when students feel more at home, and gain more friends they can actually search for some other apartments you know when they can actually look for themselves but we always recommend to use this agency and i really like to emphasize this because you know it's safety first 
Uh, also, when students ask for a visa and temporary residence permit, they have to prove that they have on their account for a year around 2,000 euros. So after they make payment for the tuition and the accommodation, they also have to prove that they have at least 2,000 euros for one year to be able to get this annual uh, residence permit card. If the student has like 1,000 euro, they will get only like for one semester residence permit and then they have to reapply again. It, it's doable, it's not a problem, but this is much more easy and simple if it's possible for students. So we always recommend this. When it comes to health insurance, especially now during the pandemics, I think it's very important to talk about health insurance. So students always have to, when they travel, uh, they always have to have travel insurance uh, just in case, you know, something happens in the first 30 days and they can get a Croatian health insurance, which is rather expensive. It costs 840 euros annually, but they, but in, they, so they can use the Croatian health insurance, but they can also take some other international insurance that's valid in Croatia. But that would mean that students would have to pay for the health care and then that insurance would uh, refund the money they spent for health care. So it's always up to students. Most of our students use Swiss care and it's like two to three hundred euros annual expense. But the Croatian health insurance is, uh, of course, much better because you can, you know, you, you don't have to make payment from your own budget for some examinations or, God forbid, some hospital treatment. So, but everything is okay. So we have a lot of private clinics as well, but our health is mostly public health. So if you have any other question, just let me know. Mm -hmm. What is the min? Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, the minimum wages actually depends on the job that students find. Uh, if we talk of bachelor level jobs, uh, students we don't actually encourage students to work during the first and the uh, first year because uh, it's very hard to adjust to, you know, it's not very hard, but it's hard to adjust to the new life and we want students to be focused on studies. But in, in the end of second year of bachelor and third year of bachelor, most students start working and it depends on them. So it depends on the skills they have. So they can like, I don't know, find jobs as waiting tables. In this case, the job could be like paid, I would say, three to 500 euros per month, it depends. But in the senior years, for instance, if a student is studying software engineering, they could actually find a job in programming and uh, get salaries like one or even more thousand euros per month. So it always depends on the job that students find. But at master level, like 98% of students work and study because what is the uh -huh. Uh -huh, when they get a full job sorry okay so after the students finish for instance if the students finish their master program uh, most of them would have like 1500 or 2000 or even more thousand euros uh, per month so uh, it, the incomes are rather high if the students work in the digital marketing industry uh, they could work in, for some digital agencies or advertising agencies. They could earn also in, in this range of, of money. But when they first arrive, in, if they just look for real student jobs, uh, I would say three to 500 uh, euros. Uh, eligible, eligibility, uh, eligibility criteria for masters. So uh, for the master in software engineering, Students have to have a really, really excellent knowledge of programming in object-oriented uh, languages. So it's either Java, either Python, either C++, either C Sharp. So students really have to know how to program and do it and be really good at it. For the systems uh, engineering program, students have to know a lot about networking, cybersecurity, uh, and um, when it comes to data science, 
this is the easiest program to enroll actually in the field of computer science. So all students who want to study in the data science, because the data science is like a horizontal science, we accept students from different backgrounds. So students can have background in computer science or psychology or economy or um, biomedicine. It really doesn't matter. They just need to have a finished bachelor and they have to have their bachelor degree. And we actually have a special online preparation module for data science program where students who don't know and who lack some knowledge, they get extra knowledge in SQL, databases, Python, and statistics. And it's free, it's free for all students, so they can join it to check if they're eligible, if they would like to join the data science program in the end. For the game development study program, uh, students have to have knowledge of at least one object-oriented programming language. So either Java, either Python, either C Sharp or C++ is mandatory for game development. When it comes to digital marketing, it's accredited in the field of economy. So all students who finish something in marketing or economy and join a short course in digital marketing we have in January, they can join the digital marketing program, but we can also help them join the program regardless of this and help them uh, get this uh, knowledge they lack during the first months of the study program. And uh, for the design and communications management program, that's in the field of arts. So students have to have some kind of bachelor in arts or possibly economy if they have like if they can prove that they have some artistic portfolio. It could be like a photo book, it could be like a fashion design project, it could be some drawings students made. And in terms of MBA, which is executive MBA, uh, a part of the finished bachelor, the students have to have at least three years of relevant work experience. Uh, when it comes to Croatian language, so uh, like most people in Croatia under 40 speak excellent English. So most people, so students will never have problems with understanding, but we always give students a crash course in Croatian language when they come. So they know the basics, like when they go to a grocery store or want to buy like a tram ticket or something. So we try to help them get by in Croatia. Uh, and during their studies, we also organize extra Croatian language courses for students who want to learn Croatian better. But for the full-time jobs after the master's, since uh, in digital technologies in ICT, actually English is the first language, we don't, ha we don't have any problems with students who don't know Croatian. So uh, we don't have a lot of problems with that, but most students like to learn at least the basics of Croatian. And if students want to decide to live in Croatia like forever, uh, it's always good for them to uh, do some extra Croatian courses because you know, in, in order to get a permanent residence, they would have to pass the Croatian language test. Uh, so it always depends on what the student looks for in the long run. I hope this answers uh, the question for uh, necessity to learn the Croatian language for getting a job. Okay, so we don't uh, insist that students give us uh, proof of their English level. So they could send us IELTS documents or TOEFL or some other uh, English uh, recognition tests. But we actually do the interview with students where we, we check the English level ourselves. So it's not mandatory that they have a special extra document. Any other questions? Okay. 
Okay, uh, you're, t you're asking about the gap. Okay, so we don't have problems in accepting students who have a gap in their education. They, uh, if they get prepared, it, it either for bachelor or masters, uh, they are more than welcome to join us. So, for instance, we have one student who came from USA a few months ago, and he finished high school ten years ago, but still he wanted to, even though he has finished bachelor and master. Uh, but it's in other field. He decided to enroll software engineering from the scratch, from the bachelor level, and now we help him with uh, extra mathematics. So he actually has problems with high school math. Um, but we won't have any problems with that because we can organize uh, extra tutors, tutor tutorials for students who lack like math knowledge or need some extra drawing uh, or want to learn more about drawing if they want to enter any of the, the arts program so we really help a lot for students to be to prepare for the studies i don't understand uh, this question about percent requirement can you please explain Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we only require students to have finished high school, and uh, for the computer science programs, it's good that they have good grades in mathematics and physics. And uh, in the for the arts program, we only check this portfolio and check their. Um, and help them if they have any other problems with uh, with the possible with, with following the courses. Uh, and when it comes to master programs, uh, we always discuss. We always, if the students are not eligible to join, we always create a special preparation program for them. So we uh, don't uh, don't respect this GPA a lot. We, we actually recognize informal and formal ways of learning at our university, because if we can evaluate that one student has some kind of knowledge, it doesn't matter if it's what it was um, gained during the high school or the studies or on some uh, course that didn't give them any credits. So we respect the knowledge first. I hope it answers your question on eligibility GPA. So if you have any questions, you can still ask. Or we could organize one more webinar if you think of any questions on the way of uh, engaging students. So no more questions? So if you have no more questions, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you need anything else, just let me know. I would be more than help, happy to, to help, to assist, to give you more information anytime. It was great uh, to be with you even online.
And I look forward to welcoming you in Croatia someday. So I wish you a great weekend and look forward to another webinar. <laughs> Goodbye.